This is Atlantic West FX. My name is Gabe Bartalis. Yes, we do make monsters and nightmares for the Hollywood films. The process is a wonderful combination of technology and artistry crashed together for the cameras. Atlantic West FX came from my love of fantasy films and artwork and I wanted a place where I could do it under one roof and be able to build sometimes the large scale things that are needed. Mostly we work on feature films, but every now and then it's television spots, sometimes it's promotional photo shoots, so it's a mixed bag and that's part of what keeps the job interesting. One of the joys of filmmaking is that it is a collaborative process and that trickles down to the creature effects, the makeup effects aspect that I'm involved in. It's a small makeup job. I still enjoy every aspect of the makeup effects process, which there are many steps to. Design, sculpture, mold making, face casting, fabrication, foam running, everything minus the animatronics I could do and do quite well and I'm happy to do it. If it's a small enough gig, it's easy to do it as a one man show. As more and more characters are introduced in the project, I will bring in a team of guys that have worked on and off through here over the years and bring them in in the specific categories that they excel in. The fascination with horror and fantasy films um, definitely started at a young age. I clearly remember being probably 14 years old doing my first short film called The Board Boy, which is 3 minutes and 15 seconds of me sitting at my kitchen table where I grew up, carving myself up, because I'm bored, till I die. I would see the late night TV shows that focused on Godzilla or Frankenstein monster and Dracula and then more specifically for me I really love uh, Creature from the Black Lagoon. Then got obsessed with zombies and Night of the Living Dead types of films which were just amazing and really terrifying if, if you thought about it, you know. That really led to uh, a golden age of horror films where it happened to time right with my realization that there was an art form going on behind the scenes. And at a period where Friday the 13th Part 1 came out, which were the effects done by Tom Savini, were so shocking and so graphic and here was makeup effects put into a scary film that it left a real impact on me and obviously a lot of the world because it fell under the splatter category there was a new category created Rick Baker in 1981 did the effects for American Werewolf in London. That was the first year the Academy saw that as a category for uh, the Academy Awards, and he won. It pushed the level of makeup effects toward the forefront, and people began to take it more seriously, and not to hide the stuff in blood, but show off the work. Dick Smith, out of Larchmont, New York, became really well known with really landmark films between The Exorcist, Altered States, then eventually getting an Academy Award for Amadeus, um, was the opposite of what most people were. He was open with the information. He would constantly toil and try new materials and he'd get excited about them and then publish journals on them. And if people called him, he'd say, yeah, send me your work, let me see it. It was an exciting period because a lot of the people that got me started in stuff, Tom Savini for the splatter effects, Rick Baker for again elevating the craft to such a scientific 
artistic level. Um, years later, I had the good fortune to work with them. I moved out to Los Angeles, got to work at a lot of different shops, and eventually got to work with Tom Savini on Texas Chainsaw Massacre Part Two. Then got to work at Rick Baker's studio on and off for three years on Gorillas in the Mist, Coming to America, Michael Jackson's Moonwalker, Beauty and the Beast, a bunch of stuff where hands-on working with him was just incredible. Again, it evolved everything to another level. Maybe more recently has been the terrific involvement with New York City artist Matthew Barney, who uses film as his medium, as an art canvas. Uh, he's been doing a series of abstract, beautiful uh, art films called The Cree Master Cycle. Five films in their entirety, shot maybe once every year, year and a half. And it was over an eight year period, and I contributed a lot of makeup effects and odd characters to it. So that um, cycle was wrapped up about a year and a half ago. That uh, its punchline was a one man show for Matthew Barney at the Guggenheim Museum in New York City, which also included a wing of makeup effects that I created for the film. It was kind of a way to show people the steps involved in designing and building characters. What I'm really excited about these days is writing, directing my own horror film, which is called Skinned Deep. And it's really just a nutty excuse for me to do a surreal script filled with uh, crazed characters that are, you know, more outlets for my imagination. Tina Rockwell, played by Carolyn Brandt, who her and her family out on a weekend outing get trapped and slaughtered in a home led by a bunch of lunatics. There is the Surgeon General, the most evil, unapologetic of the characters. He has eerie, dark welding goggles bolted to his head, a bear trap as a mouth. He's the most sinister of the group. Then we have on the flip side, we have Brain. Brain is the sweet, reluctant killer. She falls in love with the Tina character, thus sparing her life. And he would much rather be working underneath the hood of a car than out killing people, but he is a member of the family. Uh, the third member is a character called Plates. Plates is played by actor Warwick Davis, who I know from the Leprechaun series, and I've always admired his work from the George Lucas Star Wars films to Willow. Talent of Warwick's uh, scope really legitimized this character who gives speeches about the beauty of porcelain. It's just funny to see him make it real. And this whole clan is overseen by the very sweet, unassuming Granny sweet non-mutant looking little lady that invites you in to her den and then when you least suspect it you're all killed it's weird i was thinking about it if you take a term like selfish it's a negative connotation but so much of it is selfish it's i'd be doing this at home if i wasn't doing it here in fact i do have it at home i have a sculpture table in the garage it's ridiculous you know if it's quiet here i'll go home and sculpt so um, there is so much self-satisfaction out of it. And when it goes further that you could put it on a canvas of a movie and people like it, uh, it's really cool because it, it is fun if some of the darker, weirder things you dream up, when they do come out by the time they're conveyed on the big screen, if there is any type of affection toward it from the public, that's really cool. Uh, you know what, I'll tell you what, I have a lot of examples of what we've been talking around all around the studio here at Atlantic West Effects. Feel free to grab your camera, follow me, and I'll show you some of the highlights of the studio. Come on.